Hey guys, Pete here from BTI Music. I have the legendary Tim Friedman with me. How are you, Tim? Good, thanks. Good. I know you don't do too many interviews and right before a sound, after a sound check, before a gig. Fully appreciate you. Yeah, spending time with us, mate. It's really good. And I've actually been wanting to interview you for a long time. And last time you were here, it was, it was just a lot more chaotic than it is today. So thanks for coming back. Um, we run an organisation which works with kids and just helps them over the line when it comes to musical development, stage development, stage craft, and things like that. So, I want to start with something really simple. What's your favourite movie for a start? I've always liked Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Okay. With Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton right. fighting in black and white. Nice. That's an old movie, right? Yeah, it's a, from the 60s. Okay. Vicious marriage. Oh, right. maybe okay. laugh. I had an English teacher that liked it. Right. So he, he uh, transferred his love of it to me. Right, very good, very good. And at school, so English, is that a favourite? So what was the other favourite subject at, at school? Uh, yes, English. Yeah. Um, although I didn't like how I was taught. I, just, I think I, most of school I probably liked numbers more actually. Yeah, right. Okay. And then I quickly forgot how to do multiplication as yeah. soon as I left school. And you know, music helps you with the counting to four, then the eight, and you know, it all yeah, works. Yeah, I say learning music before you're five, before you're eight, it helps you with uh, numbers. Yeah. Mm. So at what point did you realise music was your thing? Oh, it's just a hobby for me. I didn't take it seriously until I was yeah, 24. Okay, right. Late boomer. Mm. Now, now the gates, late starter. Mm. Um, and at what point did you realise that people were singing your songs? So you oh, started sure late that. and then eventually someone heard your song and started singing those things. Um, when I was about 27 or 28, and Whitney started out and started getting a crowd. And I heard one of those songs on the radio. Yeah, that's a good feeling. I remember yeah. where I was. Yeah. And, and where was it? Drove down the street, the home, home, home suburb, yeah. in a white Kingswood 1979 yeah. station wagon. Nice bench seats at the front, you got it. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. Buckets are oh, a sport model. Yeah, yeah very good. Um, and when you hear your songs on the radio today, do you have that same kind of. No, I don't anymore. No? no. You don't listen to the radio? Or? I don't think <laughs> they play them. <laughs> yes, of course they do. Yeah, maybe I don't listen to the radio. Yeah, right. Anyway, I don't hear yeah. All right, cool, man. Your thoughts on the way you just have dabbled really quickly and how the English was taught at your school. How do you think music is taught these days? Do you, do you know much about how it's taught? Do you think it's the right way, people are receiving it the right way? I'm not sure. I, I do know that only about 30% of public schools have a music teacher, which is very disappointing. Uh, and I think uh, music... Um, it's a great way of getting people to go to school. Rugby, you know, AFL, yeah. rugby league and yeah. music. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. So I, I can't generalise about how it's taught. Mm -hmm. but, uh, the best thing you can get is uh, someone who just uh, teaches you how to play the stuff that you like. So yeah. that's how uh, I got in, uh, encouraged. Okay, so I never, I never did um, exams and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you were playing, you were learning things easier and quicker because of the passion that you had with the person that was teaching you. So you were learning things that you wanted to be taught. Mm. If you were going through the whole curriculum, they're teaching you things you might not have wanted to learn. Well, but sometimes you don't know what you need to learn. Yeah. However, yeah. Um, I had a teacher that <coughs> taught me what she thought I'd like, a bit of boogie-woogie and right. a bit of blues. Are going to hear some of that tonight? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I can still do it. Though. Yeah, no doubt. And yeah. probably my broke bones. Yeah. So with, with things like you know, Australian, Australia's got X Factor, Voice Talent Idol, they're all the same. What is your take on that? On how that is changing the way people move forward as a musician? Vocalist as well. Well, uh, I think young kids that go for that type of show tend to be a bit acrobatic and ornate in their singing style, whereas I think they might be better served by finding their own voice, right. writing their own songs. But still, I, my daughter watches some of them and I'm amazed how good at singing they are. Some, yeah. uh, some are good, but you know, behind the scenes stuff may not be the correct direction either. No, you have to find your own voice. If you don't have something to say, then it's very rare for someone to become, make, have a career just, just as an interpreter. Yeah. Yeah, it can be a good party trick. Yeah, but you know, yeah. uh, you won't be playing professionally for a long time, I suspect. 
Yeah. And most of it is is exactly the set of party trick. You know, they they have that I've been on T V shows that helps them a little bit after the show stops or after they finish with the show. So it's then it's up to them with their momentum to keep that running forward. Mm. Um, so I, I'm a bit two ways about it. I'm very much five percent, you know, go do it, ninety five percent. Just if you spend that much time lining up with people that are trying to do the same thing, it's just gonna bottleneck. And you might be better vocally, you might be better with the person, but you may not be better on the stage. And they're looking for the whole package when they're signing people to listen to this. Um, so, you know, I think having we're putting a program together which is going to project, project, propel people from having no TV experience, no staging experience, no CD recording experience, to absolutely everything at the end of the year through a pretty insane 12 month program. And the people that we're, we're looking for are very much those kinds of didn't quite get in, but know they've actually got a story and they've got a voice to tell. So, and I think you agree that what you've said is you have to actually have. If singing's your thing, it doesn't matter if you don't get into one of those shows. Oh no, some <coughs> I would never get in. <laughs> I never would have. Yeah, that's really funny actually. They they put someone like I can't remember who it was, someone on stage, and they, you know, they spun the chairs around. But they all they all didn't buzz. No one buzzed. But it was someone that's actually sold planes. Yeah, it was Abby Brooks. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So that's funny, isn't it? Mm. It's amazing. They wouldn't. Yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah, either. But uh, of course, probably I wouldn't uh, set myself up for the fall. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're doing great things, man. What's next for you? Uh, but see, you're solo out right now. I'm doing a bit of cabaret. We're pretending to be other people. Right. Who are you pretending to be? I did Harry Wilson this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen I'm that. I'm looking for my second contender now. Okay. Someone political? Mm, no, just someone who's solo out. Right. You were the last time you were here. We were all running for the elections. Um, I didn't have a TV or I had some kind of radio on the side of the stage so you could follow who was winning. I think it was just before Julie Gillard got in. Mm, it was probably four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was election night. It was, and if I do remember, there was someone in the audience who looked like Julie Gillard. And we found her. We found that Julie Gillard looked like in Darwin the night before, or the week before. Yep. And we flew her down to get the results. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, hey, you know, that was fun. Happy. I know you've got things to do, you've got to get back there and, and sort out the stage. Short and sweet, I sincerely thank you for this time. Millions of things that I'd love to ask that you've got a show to get on with. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. So, thanks again, Tim. We're using your kit, aren't we? You are, yeah. Good. yeah. I hope it uh, sounds good at sound check. I know, Sarah Pye's on. You know, he's, he's, he's the man. And he's the reason I play drums today. I love it. So, okay, well, you can see what you play the block tonight. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Good. Thanks again, Tim. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. More videos at djimusic.com. Thanks, guys. And we rolled on in my fat shed, play some poker, scratch my head.